Alright, lesson 3.6, uh, polynomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Of course, last lesson we did not have this a in front right here. So we're going to see how that's going to change some things. It's going to make our lives a little bit more difficult. Uh, this again is another very, very important uh, unit and I would say maybe the most difficult topic uh, in the entire course. Uh, students tend to struggle with this. Uh, they forget it still when they're in grade 11 and struggle with it. I know when I talked to Mr. Janke in grade 12. So we really need to make sure we can uh, master this concept. All right. So like last lesson, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, kind of work and show how when you multiply two binomials, that's going to help you uh, understand how it works to factor them in the end. All right. So we're going to demonstrate a couple different methods here, and then we'll get on to the actual meat of the lesson where we go ahead and factor. Okay. So. Multiplying two binomials with positive terms. So we have 3d plus 4 and 4d plus 2. So we're going to use uh, algebra tiles to do this method first. So what I'll do is I'll take the uh, 4d plus 2 and I'll put those on the top over here. So I have a d, another d, another d, and then I'll write uh, plus 2. So this is my d, 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 1, 1. All right. And on this side I will have d. D, D, so my three Ds, and four, one, two, three, four. So if I want to multiply these on out, um, it's a little bit time consuming because I've, I've made this one kind of big. We can just go D times D is D squared, another D squared, another D squared, another D squared, and then D times one gives me a D, and a D. I better make those a little bit skinnier so we can tell the difference. Like so. Okay, the next one should look the same. And the next one is also the same. You see my squares are epic as always. All right, and now we get into a little bit different. Now we have 1 times the d, so it just gives me exactly the same as what you have up there. Ooh, this is ugly. OK, so that's a d. That's another d, a d, a d. And then 1 times the 1 just gives you a 1. So those are all units. If you want, you can go label these. So these guys would be the d squareds. These guys down here would be the d's. So if we looked right here, now that we've um, used the algebra tiles, we can say that 3d plus 4 all multiplied by 4d plus 2 is equal to, let's count our d squareds up. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 times 3 gives you 12d squareds. And now the d's, we've got quite a bit of these. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over there. And then it looks like here we have uh, 4 times 4 is 16, plus a 6 should be 22 of those d's. And then just the units, the units were just kind of over here in the corner, it looks like we have 8 of them. All right. So that's one method of uh, using algebra tiles. So you'll notice that that one's a little bit different, because in last, you know what we did is we didn't have these coefficients in front, so the numbers stayed a little bit smaller. All right, the other way of doing this is how you would normally do this, and this is using the distributive property, or sometimes I'll call it FOIL for the first, ooh, yikes, for the first outside, inside, last. So if we take 3d plus 4, and we multiply it all by the 4d plus 2, we end up getting 12d squared, so 3d times 40. The 3d times the 2 gives you plus 6d. 4 times the 4d gives you 16d, and the 4 times the 2 gives you Eight, like so. Lastly, look to see if you can gather any like terms. We can right here. So we have 12d squared plus 22d plus 8. So we still got the same answer, just as we should have expected to get. All right. Um, down to the bottom here, notes. We can use algebra tiles to factor a trinomial when its terms are positive. All right, so it's not too tough. So for instance, um, to factor 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, simply just arrange it to form a rectangle like we have right here. Sometimes students even find this quicker, believe it or not, using algebra tiles, because you just make a rectangle right there, and you can tell me that those are your two factors. Right? So I have two x's across there, and then a 3, and then 1x here, and uh, just a single 1. All right. Now, it gets a little bit tougher if you mosey on to the next page when you're using algebra tiles to factor with negative terms. All right. When you do this, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use something called the zero property or the zero principle. 
All right. And what we do is we add pairs of opposite tiles to form a rectangle. So for example, to model the factoring of this polynomial, 3x squared plus 5x minus 2, arrange the tiles to attempt to form a rectangle. All right. So notice that I've done that right here. I've arranged these tiles to form a rectangle. Ignore the red thing for a second. So I've tried to form a rectangle, but you'll notice that I have this gap kind of right in here that I need to fill, right? But you can go ahead and fill it, but you have to understand that when you fill it, you have to add something else. So what I've done, right, is I imagine I took this and I filled it in with a yellow tile, right, like that. Well, I filled it in with a yellow tile, so that's, let's say, that's a positive 1x tile, right? Well, if I want to do that, then I'm going to have to add another x tile right over here. So I have to have another x tile, right? Well, you can go ahead and do that if you want. Um, just make sure that it makes a rectangle at the end. So I've gone and I've completed this, and so now you could go ahead and factor this. All right. So I just want to make sure you understand that I've added that tile and this tile right here. Of course, the 2 was already hanging out on its own, but now I've made a rectangle, and so therefore you can tell me, uh, or you can figure out what the, the factors are for this. All right. All right, so now that we've completed this rectangle, what we can do is we could uh, say what the factors are. We would look across here and we'd say that we have 3x uh, minus 1, and then on this side we have a x plus 2. And if you went and you foil that out, you would get the, uh, the solution that we have uh, up at the top. All right? So that's one example. I find students uh, find it difficult to factor when we do have that negative term like that. Um, but I've seen this on the provincial exam sometimes that they'll want you to understand how you complete this diagram. So if you need to complete that diagram, the big thing was that you understood that you had to add those tiles like so. Okay. So um, let's try another example here, um, expanding. Uh, you guys can expand this one using the method of your choice. So if the algebra tile thing worked for you, you might want to go and get some algebra tiles and try this. Of course, if you're in the classroom. If you're not in the classroom, then what you might want to do is uh, go ahead and... Um, use a distributive property. Okay, So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I'm going to use the distributive property. So I have 3h times 2h gives me 6h squared. Uh, 3h times the negative 1 gives you 3h. And the 4 times the 2h gives you an 8h. And lastly, the 4 times the negative 1 gives you a negative 4. Go and gather your like terms now. And we have our solution as 6h squared plus 5h minus 4. Okay. So. Um, now, it says, we can now factor our expanded binomial product using factoring by decomposition. All right. So, decomposition is factoring after writing the middle term of a trinomial as a sum of the two terms, then determining a common binomial factor from the two terms of pairs form. So the textbook refers to this as the decomposition method. And uh, I'm not a big fan of that. The method that I use is I will refer to this as the AC method. So you're going to hear me say this a lot in class. All right, So the AC method is what? I'm going to call this thing. The reason I do that is because we always think of our polynomial, the ax squared plus bx plus c, um, as the first term is a and the last term is c, and you're going to see how I'm going to use that. All right. So um, what we did up here is I took you through an example where we expanded. Right. Well, since we expanded, I want to go back and try and factor this now to get back to what we had right here, because we've explored that the ex this is the same thing as um, kind of like when you add and subtract. They're inverse operations. So I want to look at this inverse operation down here. So I'm going to start out with 6h squared plus 5h minus 4. We're going to learn how to factor this. And this is the meat and potato of the unit. All right. So what I want you guys to think first is you're first going to look, is there anything that you can factor out right away just by taking a look? So look at the 6h squared, the 5h, and the negative 4. There's nothing that goes into all those terms. So as a result, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into what I call the AC method. So we first start with what a times c is. So what is your first term? 6 times negative 4. What does that give you? That gives you negative 24. Now once you have negative 24, you're going to branch this out. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give me negative 24 that have a sum of whatever this middle term is, this positive 5. So the two numbers that I know are 8 and negative 3. And so what you do now is you take this and you split it up. We write this as 6h squared. And now I'm going to use this 8 and this negative 3. 
It doesn't matter what order you put it in, so it's going to be plus 8h minus 3h minus 4. Now, if you're wondering how I can do this, I really haven't changed anything. If you were to simplify positive 8h and negative 3h, you still get 5h. So I haven't changed anything, all right? Just maybe changed how it looks. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go and take a look at these first two terms. Is there anything that you can factor out of those first two terms? Well, I notice that I can factor out a 2, and then often you're going to be able to factor out a variable, so I can also take out an h. What would I be left with? Well, you put that in a bracket, so I'm going to be left with a 3h plus a 4. Okay. Now we're going to go do the same thing from this other side. What can you factor out of right here? Well, the one hint is, whatever you got in that bracket right there is going to be the same that's going to go in this bracket right here. So you can even write that right away if you want. You can write a 3h plus 4. Well, what are you going to need to factor out of this thing in order to make it a 3h plus 4? Well, since it's almost the same right there, do you see if you factored out a negative 1, that would be um, that would make all of this inside the brackets positive. So as a result now, you can write this in fully factored form as two brackets like so. One of the brackets is always going to be whatever the, your two brackets were up there, so a 3h plus 4. And then your second bracket is going to be this stuff on the outside, the 2h and the negative 4. Sorry, and the negative 1. If you go back up to the original question up here, you'll see that that was what they had like so. So that's an example of using the AC method. All right. If you were to go ahead and factor, sorry, and foil this back out, you get back up to the top like so. Let's try another one. All right. Let's go ahead and factor this one. Right away I'm going to look. Is there anything that I can factor out right away from 8, negative 18, and negative 5? No, there isn't. So I'm going to move on. So I take my A and my C terms. 8 times negative 5. That gives me negative 40. Now I'm looking for two terms that multiply to give me negative 40 that have a sum of negative 18. Now you might struggle with this for a while. If you need to, write down all the factors of negative 40 and see which one of those add up to negative 18. I found out that it's negative 20 and a positive 2. So I write this now as hp squared, notice how I have my equal sides going down the side, minus 20p, remember it makes no, no difference what order you put this in, so I could have put the 2p first, like so. Now from the first two terms I'm going to factor out whatever I can. I notice that I can factor out a 4 and a p, giving me 2p minus 5. And then if you look, I already have a 2p minus 5 sitting right there. So that means you essentially just have to factor out a positive 1, because when you factor out a 1, it does not change anything. As a result, your two factors are 2p minus 5 and 4p plus 1. Okay. Last example for you is, uh, is kind of the, the doozy of the lesson. And the only reason it's a little bit tougher is that I want you to remember that I said, before you start multiplying A and C, always see, is there anything that you can factor out of all these terms? Well, I noticed right away that 4 goes into 24, 20, and 24. So I'm going to factor out that 4. It will make it a lot easier at the end, gets your numbers smaller. So when you do this, you now have 6h squared minus 5h minus 6. All right? And now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use what I call the AC method with this stuff right here. So I take 6 times negative 6, so a times c is going to be 6 times negative 6, and that gives me negative 36. Right. And then we'll look, what are terms that multiply to give you negative 36 that have a sum of this middle term right here, negative 5? Well, they of course are negative 9 and positive 4. So I will leave that 4 outside there, and I'll write this as 6h squared, and I'm going to split it up, I'll write this as negative 9h plus 4h minus 6, and now I begin the factoring part. So 4. You can see, see, since I have that 4 right there, and I'm putting brackets inside of brackets, I'm going to differentiate them by using square brackets. All right. So I'll put those square brackets like so. When I factor something out of the 6h squared and the 9h, well, what can I factor? What's the biggest thing I can take? I can take out a 3 and an h, leaving me with 2h minus 3. And over here, since I want this to be 2h minus 3, I'm going to have to factor something out to get that to match. I have to factor out a positive 2. A lot of students, I find, forget the positive or the negative that goes right there, so make sure you guys understand that there's always going to be some type of an operator in between there. Now I can write my final answer as 4, and then my two sets of brackets. 2h minus 3 appears in both of them, and 3h plus 2 appears in the other. All right, so that concludes this lesson on what I like to call the AC method for factoring something in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C.